Hello and welcome to introductory video number five, stress and thermal analysis. Um, in video four, we looked at some of the results and some of the options we have. In this video, we're going to look at how easy it is to make an actual multiphysics analysis, including both stress and thermal analysis in the same model. Um, let me go back to this case. We'll go ahead and make a copy of this. Um, steady state still. And this is a stress analysis. We only have stress clicked on the physics page. To turn it into a thermal analysis, all we have to do is click thermal, and now it's a thermal analysis. Um, but for the same reason that to do a stress analysis, it wasn't enough to just say stress. We had to add some boundary conditions where we fix something and apply a force. Um, in order to do a thermal analysis, we need to add thermal boundary conditions. We also need to specify which materials the thermal boundary conditions will apply to, or which materials will also have thermal properties. So if we click on a material, we need to click on thermal here so that the steel has thermal properties. We click on thermal for the aluminum so that the aluminum has thermal properties. One of the reasons that you get to individually select properties for each material is that it simplifies a lot of complex simulations. If you had, for example, current going in one material, but uh, an insulator that you not that you did not want to include in your simulation because it was very small, and then another metal next to it, but you only wanted current going through the first one, you could go ahead and turn off the electrical properties of the one that you wanted to be separated by the insulator and not worry about it and just include the electrical properties on the part that conducts electricity. So we have now um, these little letters indicate what's uh, being applied. We have a simulation that will handle stress and thermal. We have two materials, both of which handle stress and thermal. We go to the constraints and now we have the option of a temperature constraint. So we'll click on this will select, um, let's see, I'm going to select this back side here for a temperature of 0 Fahrenheit and click that. Now we need to, that would basically, we could do our analysis here and um, because this is 0 degrees here, the results would be the whole model would be 0 degrees. It would be a multi-physics analysis, but not very interesting. I'm going to um, go over here to loads and because I have thermal I have some other options. I have a heat flux option here and I'll enter um, this is heat per area of uh, let me try point 0.2 um, BTUs per second per inch squared and I forgot to click on an associated surface. We're gonna associate it with this surface. Okay so now we can see our model. We have fixed temperature. The red little blobs indicate um, fixed temperature. The uh, yellow, the same as heat on this little diagram, indicate that we're heating. So we have heating here, a fixed temperature, and we're also going to get thermal expansion if the temperature is different than the reference temperature. And we didn't talk about it, but on these materials down so here is the default temperature for thermal expansion. So where it's zero degrees, we're not going to get any extra expansion. Where it's larger than zero degrees, we're going to get some thermal expansion. If we look at our material properties, um, we have linear expansion coefficient of 6.5 times 10 to the minus 6 per degrees Fahrenheit. So for each degree Fahrenheit above zero degrees, it's going to expand by that much. If it's below, it's going to contract by that much. So let's go ahead um, by that fraction. Let's go ahead and cancel this. Um, and we have that set for the default values, which is zero degrees for both materials. So now we have um, something fixed at a fixed temperature. We have a load where we're heating it. And we should get some interesting thermal results. We'd expect this part to be hotter. This part to be colder would expect more thermal expansion here and um, no thermal expansion along this edge. We include also the multi-physics. We have this side fixed with respect to stress, so it's not going to move. And we're applying a force here. So this is 
a full multi-physics thermal and stress analysis and we just click auto solve and there's our results um, let me animate it so you can see what's going on uh, you can see that primarily we're doing a lot of expansion here so this part is expanding um, the displacements over here because it's moving have gone from around 10 to the fifth um, in terms of inches to 0.05 so a significant increase in displacement because of our our heat flux here we can uh, go down to here for our contour settings and pick temperature so this shows that it's it's getting pretty hot here. This is the temperature of over a thousand degrees and this is the temperature of zero degrees. Again, we fixed that temperature. Um, we have the same tools that we had to work with before, the integrated. We could integrate the heat flow through this. Um, that might be interesting. Let's go ahead and uh, turn off the scaling turn on a cutting plane. I want a cutting plane that's in the XZ, so we pick the XZ direction. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and select integrate. So that gives us a result per area of 0.21 BTUs per second per inch squared. And that's pretty much the amount of heat that we're putting in this end is going all the way through our model. So that looks good. We'll close that dialog and get rid of the uh, contour plane. Um, another interesting thing, now that we actually have something flowing through the model, is we can display streamlines. So if we click um, show here, it's going to do the heat flux. It's going to pick out the uh, sort of most popular vector. So we see vectors here showing which direction the heat is flowing. If we want to make things a little more obvious, we can, um, let's turn off the boundary conditions. Let's go and turn off the mesh faces and turn off the mesh edges. And then this gives us uh, a diagram of what the heat looks like as it flows through the model. We can also click on streamlines which gives us um, another visual representation of these streamlines essentially just uh, follow a particle as it would go through the model it would follow this path. So those are two of the other results options that are available in uh, Multiphysics for IronCAD. Let me turn these off, go back and turn on faces and edges and nodes. Now another thing we could have done is turn on transparency. Let's try transparency and um, turn on the streamlines. Uh, yeah, you could try that. Turn off the edges, turn off the nodes, <laughs> and that's another way of uh, looking at your model to see what's going on. It Obviously the heat has to go around the hole that's in the middle of the model, and we see how the heat passes through the rest of the model. So that's your introduction to a full multi-physics model with thermal analysis and stress analysis and how easy it is to do with multi-physics for IronCAD. Thank you very much.